All right, hey guys, and welcome back to another brand new Battlefront 2 video. This is going to be another tips and tricks video, and it is going to be continuing on the series. As I have mentioned before, there are a lot of new players in the game right now, which I am sure a lot of you guys are seeing, and I'm almost positive that after Christmas that even more people will be joining the Battlefront. So this video today is going to be discussing the best loadout for each infantry class. Now, everyone has a different play style. However, not everyone knows which star cards are best or which weapons are best to use with which attachments. So what I'm going to do is give you all a rundown of what I personally think is the best weapon, attachments, and star cards for the Assault, Heavy, Officer, and Specialist classes. Now keep in mind this is my opinion, but with over two years of playing this game, hopefully my suggestions can be helpful not only to you new players, but also to some of you players that have been around for a while as well. So with that out of the way, be sure to smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on all notifications with the little bell icon in the corner and with that said let's get started so we're gonna start off with the assault class personally I think the best weapon for the assault class is the CR2 with the reduced recoil attachment so with this weapon I only have one out of the three attachments attached but I really don't think the other two attachments are needed this is such a beast with just the one on I think on the close maps like the Death Star and things like that it is the best possible choice for the weapon for the assault class however in saying this though if you do get onto more open maps like Crate and Geonosis I think the the A280 with the improved cooling and the improved range attachments are probably the best option. In terms of star cards, most of the time you are going to be wanting to go for a hero. However, instead of just putting the Bounty Hunter card with every single class, I've put the Bounty Hunter in there as well as an excess card that you can use instead. So for the Assault class, the first star card should always be the Bounty Hunter card. This is going to give you fast battle points if you are chasing a hero. However, if you're not chasing a hero, I would recommend trying the Assault Training class, which is going to give you a little bit of health with each kill that you get. The second star card I recommend using is the Smart Ion Grenade. This works kind of like an impact grenade and does instant damage when it hits an enemy. If not, you can use the Improved Thermal Detonator. It just depends which one you like better. If you like the impact detonation and damage straight away, then go with the Smart Ion Grenade. If you don't mind waiting for a little bit of a charge up and you can time your grenades well, the Improved Thermal Detonator is really effective too. Now, the third and final star card for the Assault class. This is one that I see some people using, but I think a lot more people would get use out of using it. This is the Toughen Up Star Card. The Toughen Up Star Card changes your right ability from the Scan Dart to a quick health regeneration ability. So you can activate this and your health will immediately start regenerating. This has got me out of trouble so many times. That instant boost of health back if you have already taken a lot of damage can be really helpful and it can get you out of sticky situations. So if you aren't using this currently, I definitely recommend putting it on. Next up, we're going to talk about the Heavy class and I think without a doubt we can all agree that the TL-50 with reduced spread and improved cooling attachments is by far the best heavy weapon. The other heavy weapons are decent, but I think this one takes the cake. Once you learn how to aim this thing and if you can land headshots with it, it melts just about anyone. Even heroes can be taken out really quickly with this weapon if you have good accuracy. So I definitely recommend using this and getting used to how it fires and working on that aim because it can be very effective. Now in terms of star cards, I have two different loadouts that I use for the heavy. The first one being the hero killer loadout and the second one being the vehicle killer loadout. So let's start with the hero killer loadout and that is going to start of course with the bounty hunter card if you're going for a hero. However, if you aren't chasing a hero with using the heavy class, I would recommend resourceful. Resourceful allows you to recharge your abilities that much faster and if you are playing the heavy class, you're going to be wanting to use your abilities that often because it is the most effective way to play it, especially with the two star cards that I am just about to talk about. The first one of those two being the detonite charge. Now this is similar to what Han Solo uses. However, you can't throw it nearly as far as he can. This one you can just kind of set down and wait for an enemy to run near and detonate it manually. But in saying that, I have figured out a way to use it very effectively. So if you know an enemy is pushing you, definitely look to aim up in the air, press the ability to throw the detonite charge out. And because you're aiming up in the air, the actual detonite is going to go further, then roll backwards and detonate it when the enemy pulls the corner. This I've found super effective. I've killed multiple enemies this way, especially if you've taken a lot of damage from that enemy and they start to push on you. You just throw that detonite out around the corner and let it explode and pretty much wipe out any infantry that's on the other side of it. It also does massive damage to heroes, so I would recommend using it when you're in close quarters to them because it can be super effective. Now, the final star card in the hero killer loadout is the barrage star card. This is really good, not just for damage in terms of explosive, but it also clears a lot of objectives. Sometimes it can be 
be very hard to push the hallways on Naboo or maps like that. I think this is really good just to send down there and the explosive damage is quite high. So you can use this not just for clearing objectives, but again, like I said, for taking out heroes. If you can land all three barrage shots on a hero or around a hero and a detonite charge, they are going to be very weak, which is why I call this the hero killer loadout. So if you haven't tried these cards in combination together, I definitely suggest doing it next time you're on the battlefront playing the heavy class. Now, next up for the heavy, let's talk about the vehicle killer loadout. Everybody has those games where you have some guy that's spamming the ATST, he's standing at your spawn point and you're pretty much trapped in there and can't get out. Well, I have a solution for this. Again, we're going to be using the resourceful star card so that your abilities recharge quicker. On top of that, you're going to want to use the ion torpedo. The ion torpedo is one that locks onto vehicles and does a lot of damage. If you can hit all three torpedoes onto an ATST, they are going to be very weak. And in combination with the next star card, which is the ion turret, you should be able to take out any ATST that is in your way. My suggestion is to find a spot where the ATST can't see you straight away, crouch down and make yourself a smaller target, and then lock on and fire away. If you can get the ion turret set up and the ion torpedo landing all three shots, those ATST players are going to get very frustrated and you're going to be able to take them out each time they decide to spawn in. Another suggestion if you are using the vehicle killer loadout and that's how you plan to play is hunting vehicles, I would suggest switching the TL50 to the FWMB10K with the ion shot attachment. This just gives you a little bit more of ion damage which is great against vehicles as well and I think it would do a little bit better instead of the TL50 in that situation. Now moving on from the heavy class, we are going to talk about the officer class. And this is easily by far the most played class in Battlefront 2. For what reason? Well, it is because it is the easiest class to get a hero. It has the fastest battle point gain out of all of the infantry classes. And for those of you new players, if you haven't tried playing the officer just yet because you think the assault or one of the other classes is better, I definitely recommend listening up right now. The weapon you wanna be using for the officer class is the SE44C with the rapid fire attachment and improved cooling. People that have played the officer class for a long time know that this is by far the best weapon and the rapid fire attachment makes it miles above what the standard weapon is. The standard SE44C is kind of average at best, but with the rapid fire attachment and the improved cooling, it becomes an absolute beast of a weapon. So anyone that hasn't got those attachments unlocked yet, be sure to work towards them because it is a game changer. Now, which star card should you use for the officer class? With the improved battle point gain already over the other infantry classes, you are at an advantage. On top of this, you 100% want to be using the Bounty Hunter Star Card to get increased battle point gain out of your officer. On top of this, I like to use the Officer's Presence, which is going to give you a battle point boost every time you use it on a teammate that then regenerates health. Again, the whole point of the officer is to buff your team. This is going to give you the most battle points and get you to the hero quickest, which is why you probably see a lot of officers on the battlefront towards the start of a game. After the officer's presence, you can pretty much use any of the recharge commands. So you can use improved battle command, recharge command, or blast command. All three are good in their own way, and it depends on what play style or what ability effects you like to use on which one you should play with. I suggest using the improved battle command if you like to get a little bit more health. However, I do find the other two useful in certain situations as well. So maybe test all three of them out and see which one you prefer best. Now, finally, we get to the specialist class. And those of you that watch my streams know I absolutely love playing the specialist when I get the chance. The weapon of choice for me is the NT242 with the dual zoom and improved cooling attachments. This weapon is probably one of the most satisfying in the game. One shot headshot to any infantry unless they are a buffed heavy. That is one of the most satisfying things out of the whole game is to land the clean headshot with this weapon and just hear that kill ping go off and just know you've landed the cleanest shot possible. This weapon is so much fun to use, although I do suggest trying the A280C because that can be a lot of fun to use with the burst attachment. It just doesn't give you quite as much range as the NT242. So when you are in close quarters, maybe try the A280C if you're playing the specialist with the burst attachment. But I do recommend the NT. It is probably one of the most fun weapons in the whole game. In terms of star cards, if you're not using the Bounty Hunter card, which when you're playing Specialist, there really isn't much reason to be using it because you're probably not going to get a hero before an officer, I suggest using the Survivalist star card.
card. This basically speeds up your health regeneration process, so if you do take a bit of damage, your health will start to come back that much quicker, so you can get back into the action. The second star card I suggest using is the personal shield. What happens with this is when you take a bit of damage, you can pop a personal shield that will absorb any damage coming your way until it takes around 250 damage. I've found the personal shield super helpful in so many situations. If you get shot, if you're in a snipe out by another NT and you take a whole ton of damage or someone's just got really good aim, you can pop that personal shield and get out of the way. And with the survivalist star card, your health is going to come back really quickly so you can get rid of the personal shield and get back to firing at your enemies. So these two cards stack really well and I think they're a good combination. The third star card I do use for the specialist class is the hardened infiltration. The infiltration gives you the EE4, which is probably would be one of the most OP weapons in this game if it was actually for regular infantry and not just with the infiltration ability, but the hardened infiltration gives you damage reduction while you're using this ability. I definitely think it's worthwhile, and although I don't use it a whole bunch, I do enjoy using it. It is really cool when you land clean bursts on enemies and just wipe them out. The infiltration is a two burst kill to most infantry, unless they are buffed of course, so it's definitely worth having that damage reduction so you can get in behind enemy lines and take out anyone without taking too much damage. Anyways guys, that is everything I would suggest for you for infantry in terms of the best weapons and star card loadouts. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Was this video helpful? Do you use the same options that I do or do you have something different that I should try? Because I would love a little bit of feedback as well. So make sure you guys drop that in the comment section below and I really hope you enjoyed this video. Anyways, I am going to get out of here now. Thank you all so much for the support lately. We are so close to 20,000 subscribers and I think in the next week or so we should be there. So thank you again. I appreciate the support and I will see you in the next video. I am the Twisted Jedi and may the Force be with you always. Mississippi.